Welcome to Chapter 17, Reactions of Aromatic Compounds. Okay, so the first problem, we need to predict the major products formed when benzene reacts just once with the following reagents. Okay, so we're talking about benzene here. Makes this a little thicker here. Okay. So we're talking about benzene. The first one is tert butyl bromide and aluminum trichloride. Um, so that's a Lewis acid. Basically, this would generate a tertiary carbocation and react with benzene to make. One, two, three. Tert butyl benzene. Okay, the next one is isobutyl. One, two, three, four. Isobutyl. It's isobutyl alcohol plus BF3. So basically, the OH is going to coordinate with the boron to make this a good leaving group. And you're going to generate a tertiary carbocation, but that's going to want to do a rearrangement. So you get a hydride shift and so the hydrogen goes over here and you generate your tertiary carbocation. And then when you react that with benzene, you get the same thing. You get tert butyl benzene. One, two, three. Tert butyl benzene. Isobutylene. Okay, so isobutylene with HF. You get. protonation to give you the more stable carbocation and fluorine is a poor nucleophile so you will get this tertiary carbocation that will react with benzene to give you the tert butyl benzene. Okay so then the next problem is um, one chloro, two, two dimethyl. Okay, so to draw the two, two dimethyl propane, one chloro, and it reacts with aluminum trichloride. This is going to give you a carbocation that's primary. Then you're going to have a methyl shift. So this methyl group will come here. And then you will get the carbocation at the tertiary position. This reacts with benzene to give you one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five that product there. Okay, the next one is iodide with nitric acid. That gives you the iodonium species. When this reacts with benzene, it just basically iodinates benzene. I told you you didn't need to know carbon monoxide, HCl, aluminum trichloride, and copper chloride. It is in your book. Um, the next one we have one chloro Butane, so let's draw one chlorobutane, one, two, three, four. There's one, two, three, four, one. Chlorobutane with aluminum trichloride, that's a nice Lewis acid. Gives you the primary carbocation, but we're going to get a methyl shift because we want, or I'm sorry, a hydride shift because we want the most stable 
So when you get a hydride shift, you're switching places with this hydrogen and you get the secondary carbocation, which is more stable. This will react with benzene. So you get a methyl there. One, two, three, four. There's your product. Okay, the next one we have bromine and a nail. A nail is iron and bromine. So this will end up making um, iron tribromide. And then you'll still have bromine in solution. And so this generates the bromonium electrophile. This reacts with benzene to do a bromination reaction to make bromobenzene. Fuming sulfuric acid. This is sulfur trioxide and sulfuric acid. It's about 7%. So this is a sulfur trioxide intermediate or reactive intermediate to make sulfonated benzene, which looks out to be SO3H. I'll draw that up here too. If you just want the, re the condensed SO3H. The next one is benzoyl chloride and aluminum trichloride. So we can go over here. This is a Friedel's craft. So when you have benzoyl chloride, it's benzoyl chloride and aluminum trichloride. This is going to give you the acylium ion. Here's your acylium ion, and this is going to react with benzene to make this product here. Okay, the next one is we have nitric acid, HNO3, and sulfuric acid. This is going to make your nitronium, and this is going to react with benzene to do a nitration reaction in O2. And if you wanted to draw that out in its Lewis structure, remember that the oxygen has a negative charge and the nitrogen has a positive charge. And our last one is what appears to be a Friel's craft. Um, so we have CH2 and we have COCl. And this is kind of funny because it's like this, Cl. Mm. Let's draw this a little different. Okay, so does that look right? COCl. And then we have aluminum trichloride. So this is going to generate a carbocation. From this carbon here, the chlorine is going to leave. So let's just do this stepwise. And it's going to react with benzene. So the first one, we do the acylium ion, and then COCl, do these one at a time, CH2, this is going to, the next one is going to be an intramolecular reaction, because we still have aluminum trichloride, so it's going to generate the psyllium ion with that carbon. And then um, this is a meta director, which is kind of interesting because it's not going to go that way. It, um, it will have to go ortho, so be forced. So because it's an intramolecular one, two, three, one, two, three, this becomes a carbonyl. And it re-aromatizes. So you won't see those intermolecular ones on, on the exam. If that comforts you. Okay, the next problem here we have 
Predict the major products form with isopropyl benzene. So now we have a substituted benzene. Isopropyl benzene reacts with the following. So you got to look at your substituents here, isopropyl, and then you classify it as electron donating group, and it's an ortho para director. And where's our ortho positions? These are ortho positions, and this is a para position. Okay, so the first reaction then is one equivalent of bromine and light. Okay, so now we know we're dealing with the benzylic position. And the benzylic position is right here. And on that carbon, there is a hydrogen that by a bromine radical would get abstracted. There's our fish hook arrows. And then this other one goes there. That counts for three electrons. And so you wouldn't even touch the aromatic ring. You would generate this HBr in the free radical, and then it would react with bromine to generate another bromine radical. And you would get bromination at the benzylic position. So the key there is bromine and light. OK, what if you had bromine and iron bromide, tribromide, or iron 3-bromide? This would, and it would actually be iron 3-bromide naming of ionic compounds, and bromine, so what do you get here? We got the isopropyl group, and we're just going to do one equivalent. So it's going to generate, um, it's going to generate the bromium ion, which is a strong electrophile, so you can imagine you would get both para, and you would get the ortho. So, you would get both of these as your major products. Okay, the next one is sulfonation. So SO3 and H2, SO4. Sometimes you see this as fuming sulfuric acid. So your electrophile is the sulfur trioxide. Once again, you have your isopropyl benzene, and you're going to get ortho position and you're going to get the para position product. Okay. Next one is hot concentrated potassium permanganate. This is a benzylic reaction. And so we do have the isopropyl here, our benzylic positions there. We do get cleavage and these benzylic positions with hot potassium permanganate always make the carboxylic acid or the salt if we're in basic conditions, which uh, we are. We can assume so because we don't have acid. Okay, acetyl chloride. Acetyl is CH3, carbonyl chloride, and aluminum trichloride. This is going to make our Acillium ion. Now I draw it like that out of convenience, but this would be a linear type looking molecule. And with the isopropyl benzene substituent, you are going to get, um, it's going to add to the ortho position. This is Friedel's graph. And you're going to get addition at the pair position. So make sure you draw that. Ortho and para. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of clunky looking. CH3. Kind of running out of space here. So that's para and ortho. Ortho. Okay, and the last one is n-propyl chloride. 
one, two, three. N means straight chain chloride and aluminum trichloride. Um, so you are going to get, this is a primary carbocation. This is Friedel's craft. You're going to get rearrangement, so it's going to go through a hydride shift to get you the secondary carbocation. And then when you react this with your iso, <sighs> propyl benzene, probably going to get pair more than anything because of the steric hindrance. So if I had to pick between para and ortho, I'd pick para. But um, we don't have to, so draw both. This is your ortho, and that's a bisisopropyl benzene. Okay, the next question is asking you how would you synthesize the following compounds, starting with benzene or toluene, any necessary acyclic reagents. Okay, so how are you going to make these compounds. So 1-phenyl. Um, phenyl is a substituent onto butane. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's 1 and 1-bromo. One so it's asking how to make that compound. Okay, so this is 2, 3, 4. One, two, oh, we double name that. Okay, well, let's draw it again. Okay. So that's carbon number one. That's carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. So in order to make this compound, it comes from a phenyl group, and so we can imagine this bond right here, and carbon number one, let's make this an acyl group, so one, two, three, Four, because we don't want rearrangement. So when you do that, the Friel's craft, so you're going to need aluminum trichloride. That product is going to give you this one, two, three, four. And then you can do a reduction using sodium borohydride. There's actually several ways to do this. And then you can use PBR3. And that would give you your desired product. And if you have another way, you can just ask me and I'll check your work. Okay, so what about 1-phenyl methoxybutane? So once again, we have butane, 4, 3, to one, one methoxy, um, oh. Okay, next one is to make one phenyl, one methoxy, one, two, three, four, butane. So basically you can just take product you had from your synthesis in the very beginning. So let's draw this product with the bromo compound and then you can recognize that this is an ether you're trying to make and this is an alkyl halide, a benzylic alkyl halide. So those are very reactive so basically you just need to do the Williamson ether synthesis here. And this would be an SN2 reaction, and that would give you a desired product. Okay, the next one is propanol 
this is one propanol two three three phenyl so one two three now when you see something like this this is two carbons and the OH is a primary the alcohol somehow usually you're gonna have some kind of epoxide so we have to start with benzene or toluene so um, you could start with benzene and you can do a bromination reaction and that will give you bromobenzene and then from bromobenzene you can react it with magnesium and ether to give you a Grignard and then that phenyl magnesium bromide the Grignard can react with an epoxide and so you can imagine this is plus this is negative it's going to open the epoxide because epoxides open that's what epoxides do when they react and so we have this carbon here this carbon and OH so you react it with a little bit of you do a little work up with acid so you can get that protonated and that gives you your desired product okay the next one is ethoxy benzene um, so once again, this um, I see is an ether, and so you can basically, um, how I would do that is I would do, I react it with phenol and sodium hydroxide, and I make my phenoxide, sodium phenoxide. And then I would react that with CH3, CH2 bromine. This is the Williamson ether synthesis. Um, and this would give you your ether. Now, is the phenol allowed to be used? Um, perhaps not. So I'd have to look into this. And I will look into this later. If you have any questions on how to make a phenol from benzene, we can look into that. As for now, I'm going to push on to the next question. Okay. So the next one is the synthesis of 1,2-dichloro-4-nitrobenzene. So this is, here if I can... And move sideways over here. Okay, look it up here. So benzene and four nitro, one, two dichloro, four nitro benzene. So you got to know that nitro is a meta director, so we can direct the chlorine there. And um, so we start with benzene. And the first thing we'd want to do is chlorinate this. So chlorine and aluminum trichloride would give you that compound there, chlorobenzene. And then you'd want to do HNO3 and sulfuric acid, which would give you nitration. And even though chlorine is a deactivator, it would still go para. There's your nitro, and then you would react it with chlorine and aluminum trichloride, and you'd have nitro is going to be a para direct, a meta director, so it'd be there, and chlorine is going to be a ortho director, so you would get then chlorination on the ortho position to the chlorine and at the meta position of the nitro. Okay, the next one is 1-phenyl-2-propanol. So what does that look like? 1-phenyl-2-propanol. So we draw our propanol. And 1-phenyl-1. There's 2, OH, and there's 3. Okay, 
So in order to do this, we take benzene and we react it with bromine and iron 3 bromide to get bromobenzene. And then we're going to make the Grignard and so that's magnesium and ether. And we get our Grignard, magnesium bromide. And then we're going to react this with an epoxide and it'll be a substituted epoxide. And it's going to come in from the least substituted. And then we'll quench that with a little bit of acid. And what does that look like? That's going to open here. So you get OH, CH3. And that gives you your desired product. Okay, the next one is paraamino benzoic acid. Let's see if I can. Um, Trying to see if I can cut this real quick. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just go here. Okay, so para amino benzoic acid. So what does that look like? Benzoic acid is this compound right here, and para would be right here. So para amino benzoic acid. Um, you would want to, starting from benzene, you would want to do a, I would say a methylation. So you could just do methyl bromide and aluminum bromide, tribromide, and that would be a Friel's craft. And that would give you um, toluene. Actually, you can start with toluene. So what am I talking about? So just start with toluene. So there's toluene, and then you do a, a nitration, HNO3 and sulfuric acid, and that's going to give you para- nitro toluene and then you want to do a, um, a reduction so you just do basically zinc and dilute HCl and that's going to reduce the nitro to an aniline or an amine and then you want to do hot potassium permanganate and that's going to do a, a benzylic oxidation. And there you have, you have to work it up with some dilute acid to get the protonation. Okay, the next problem is 2-methyl, 1-phenyl, butyn, 2-all. So let's see, write that up here. Um, 2-methyl, 1-phenyl, butan, 2-all. Butan okay, so what does that look like? We have a phenyl, it's on, a, it's on the 1, so we got butanol, 1-phenyl, on the 2, you have the OH, and also on the 2, you have the methyl. Okay, so we start with benzene, and um, we're going to, basically, let's do um, a Grignard. So we've got to rominate the benzene 
And then we're going to react this with magnesium and ether to make our Grignard. And then we can react this with um, a ketone, CH3. So there's our four carbons, one, two, three, four. And this is going to nucleophilically add to the carbonyl to make us an alcohol. We're going to add a little bit of H3O plus, and that is going to give us a tertiary alcohol. And this is your methyl, this is your methyl, and is that, looks like we might be one carbon off from this, so, because that would actually give us what? That would give us this compound. Doesn't look like that's what we want. So I would react that with an epoxide. So instead of doing that then, we can react it with an epoxide. And you can imagine that this would go here and open up there. That would be that carbon. Let's make that blue. This carbon would be the OH. And um, you could still substitute this with a methyl and there, and that would give you your product. So when you have to do two carbons like that, you're gonna have to go with epoxide. But if you were to go with one carbon on the alcohol, you could do an, um, a ketone. Okay, so the next one is three chloro, no, five chloro, Two methyl aniline, and then let's see what the next ones are. Okay, three nitro, four nitro benzene. Um, okay, let's go ahead and start working on these. Okay, so the next one is five dash chloro dash two methyl aniline. So let's draw our aniline, and then at the two, one, two, we have methyl, three, four, five, we have chloro. This is really going to be the order. Um, first thing we'd want to do is... Well, actually, you can just, um, we can take toluene, and we can add chlorine, and aluminum trichloride, and that's going to go para, and then we can react this with nitric acid and sulfuric acid, and... The methyl group is not going to want to activate that there. It's going to want to go here, right? Because it's the more activating. So we probably would be better off going. Um, so I would not do that. And I would take benzene. And I would. Um, yeah, okay, so basically you're going to want to do the nitric acid first and sulfuric acid and go ahead and make the nitro in O2 and then nitro can direct the methyl so then you can use mm, methyl bromine and aluminum trichloride It'll give you your Fritos craft and it will go to the meta position with the CH3. And then this is going to be your stronger activating, so you can just do chlorination from that point and it would go para. 
um, or you could, and then you'd have to reduce that, or you could take this compound here and go ahead and reduce it. So here you have this, you reduce it with zinc and dilute HCl. That's gonna make the amine. Now the amine will be an ortho director and it's very activating. So then you could just do chlorine with aluminum trichloride and that would go to the ortho position because the amine would direct it there as well as the methyl. Okay, so the next problem is 3 nitro 4 bromo benzoic acid. Okay, so what does that look like? So benzoic acid. 4 bromo, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 3 nitro. Okay, so at this point, you know you can do your benzoic acid with permanganate, hot permanganate from toluene. And um, you know that, so... Probably the best thing you should do is take um, benzene and react it with um, nitric acid and sulfuric acid. And go ahead and do the nitration. And then I would do the phenyl bromide and aluminum trichloride and do the Friels craft oculation. So we put a methyl group there. Meta, that's meta to the nitro group. And then um, I would go ahead, since that's an activating group and a strong activating group, just go ahead and do bromine and iron bromide, iron three bromide. And that's going to override the nitro so the nitro is deactivating and it's going to give you a bromine there. And then you can just potassium permanganate and hot heat will do a benzylic oxidation to CO2H, carboxylic acid. Okay, next problem is 3 dash nitro dash 5. Bromo benzoic acid. So what does that look like? CO two H three nitro five bromo. Okay, so do the nitration again, just like you did above. Um, and so HNO3, H2SO4. That will give you nitration. And then I would go ahead and add a Friels craft oculation with methyl bromine and um, I guess iron bromide, iron 3 bromide or aluminum trichloride. That's going to give you the methyl group at the alpha position. Now go ahead and do a benzylic oxidation to make the carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid is gonna be a deactivator, electron withdrawing. So now if you react with bromine and iron three bromide, both of those substituents are going to be meta directors. So that will direct the bromine to the meta position. Okay, so that was 3 nitro 5 bromobenzene. Uh, 
the next one is here let's just check these off we've done this one and this one and this one so we got four butyl phenyl okay so we got two more okay let's get some white space here and we've got four dash butyl phenyl phenol sorry about that phenol okay so what does that look like so there's phenol and then at the four position we have butyl one two three one two three four so what i would do um well you know once again i'm going to start with a phenol i know it says benzene or toluene but i think you just I think you can buy phenol and it's so cheap so I'd say just do that and then react it with CH3, CH2, CH2 acid chloride and aluminum trichloride and this is going to give you your um, it's a pair director and it's a Friedel's craft so you got one two three four one two three four and then the second thing I would do is a Clemenson reduction, which is just zinc with some mercury and dilute HCl. And that would give you your product. Okay, and the last one, 2-4-methyl phenyl butan 2-all. Okay, so we have our phenyl group here and at the four we have a methyl and so here we have um, on the two we have this is the two the butanol ring the one two three four the two we have this group and then on the other also on the two we have an alcohol okay so obviously something like this where the alcohol is directly bound it can come from the ketone and so you can imagine that this would come from um, if you had that with magnesium and ether you could do the Grignard and so you're making a tertiary alcohol so a grignard and a ketone would be great and then you'll have to quench it with some acid and then how do you make this well you have toluene to start with and you just react this with bromine and iron 3 bromide okay the next one is predict the products of the following reaction instead of synthesizing it. So let's look at these. So we have benzene, we have 2, 4 nitrobenzene with sodium methoxide. Oh, 2, 4 dinitrochlorobenzene. So we have a chlorine here. Okay, this is that um, NAS reaction, nucleophilic aromatic substitution, and all that I require you to recognize, I don't require you to know the mechanism, but these are strong electron withdrawing groups, the nitro and then the ortho para position, and that chlorine is a leaving group. So this ring, um, and you have a strong nucleophile, so this ring could do a NAS reaction, nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so we're substituting the chlorine leaving group for the nucleophile. Okay, so that's that product right here. Now the next one we have is a phenol. 
So there's your phenol, and you've got tart butyl chloride and aluminum trichloride. So you can go ahead and make your tert butyl carbocation. You recognize your phenol is a electron donating group or it's a paradirector. And so I'm going to draw this product like this at the para. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the ortho as well. Okay, the next one is nitrobenzene. There's nitrobenzene and fuming sulfuric acid, SO3, H2, SO4. I recognize that nitro is electron withdrawing group and it's a meta director. So I will just draw my SO3H on the meta position. The next one I have is nitrobenzene and acetyl chloride. So I'm realizing since it's an acid chloride with aluminum trichloride, this is Fritos Craft isolation. I recognize that I have a nitro. So I'm looking at electron withdrawing meta director. My acetylium ion intermediate would look like this. And that would be electrophilic aromatic substitution. The next one is paramethyl anisole. So if you remember, anisole is OCH3, and we have paramethyl. So paramethyl anisole plus acetyl chloride and aluminum trichloride. Once again, this is a Friedel's craft acylation. So there's our acylium ion. This is our um, great electrophile and we look at our ring and we see that this is electron donating group we got two electron donating groups this one and this one's going to be um, ortho and this one's going to be ortho and the other one's going to be para so then you got to look at which one is more activating is it the methyl or is it the o methoxy and if you remember correctly on a slide i showed you I think the O methoxy is like a hundred times, thousand, hundred thousand times more activating. So it's going to win and you're going to get the ortho position to that compound as your product. Okay, now we have one more with bromine and light. It's the same starting material, so I'm not going to redraw this starting material. It's paramethyl anisole, but now we're going to add bromine and light. Light is H nu, and we have a benzylic position, so we're going to get free radical bromination. So that's going to be CH2 bromine. And that will be your product there. Okay, the next one. Predict the major products from the following reaction. Okay, so the first one, once again, we have that same setup with 1, 2, chloro, 4, nitro, benzene, and we have sodium amide. Okay, so that's a strong nucleophile. These are electron uh, withdrawing groups. And so we're going to get a NAS reaction, nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And I'm going to draw the product as NH2 here as your product. Okay. Okay, the next one is paranitrotoluene. So paranitrotoluene. So there's toluene, and this is paranitro. And you're reacting with zinc and dilute. HCl, so this is going to reduce the nitro group to a primary amine. So there is our product. And it is an aniline product. Our next one is paraethyl, so CH2, CH3, benzene, sulfonic acid, SO3H. And we're reacting with HNO3. H2SO4, so this is a nitration because it's going to generate the nitronium ion as our electrophile. And then we have to look at 
the most activating substituents because we have more than one. So this is very activating. This would be deactivating. So your only options then would be at the ortho para position or the ortho position to the ethyl group. So you're may use pick one and do the nitration there. And that would be your product. K and L, C below. Okay, so the first one here is um hmm, did I draw that right? Okay. Um right, so Tri J K. Okay. Okay, so let's draw this. So let's draw this out. So we have phenyl, and then we have. I think what's missing here is aluminum trichloride to make the psyllium electrophile, the ion. Uh, when looking at this compound, we should see that it is, this is electron withdrawing group. So it's going to be a meta director. And so our product will be uh, CH3, that's ortho and meta. And that would be our product. Okay, this one, endane. These are your benzylic positions here, and both of them would get oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So you would have this carboxylic acid, and if you put in some acid, you would get the actual acid. Okay, this last one here, so this one over here, you have um, an amide. And then you have a methyl group, and you have a Friedel's craft isolation. So when you look at this, you have to decide um, one that's steric hindrance, so it's going to block your basically going to get um, the methyl group be very directing, activating. So I would add this group, which the electrophile would be your acetylene ion. And I would add it here at that position to give you your product. OK, the next problem says give the structures A through H. Okay, so let's look at this. So A, structure A. Um, that would be a Friedel's craft. Isolation. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. So it would be compound A. And then it would get nitrated. And you have to look to see whether that substituent is electron donating or withdrawing. It's electron withdrawing, so you're going to get it at the meta position here. And that is a nitration, because that generates the nitrium, nitronium ion there. So you get, that would be compound B. Compound C would be a reduction. Um, a Clemenson reduction, so the carbonyl here is going to go to a methylene. It goes to CH2. That's compound C. And then hot permanganate concentrated is going to do a benzylic oxidation and make the carboxylic acid. That's compound D. Um, if you react compound C with bromine and H nu, then one of these 
uh, benzylic hydrogens are going to get removed and replaced with a bromine. This is free radical bromination to give you compound E. And you're not expected to know that reaction, so they give you the product. If you react this with um, tert butyl, say one butoxide, so let's make sure one, two, three, four. Um, what you have here is you're going to have an elimination because this is a bulky base. So it's going to do an E2 elimination where it takes that proton and you get bromine leaving and you would get this compound here and that would be compound G and they react that with HBr that's an ionic bromination so you're going to get um, the more substituted product Yatsevs so in this case actually um, okay so let's say you, you get I think you're going to still get this and the reason why is let's say you get protonation of that double bond what if you got it there so the benzylic position versus a tertiary carbocation I don't know I'd argue about that one because I think you would get I think the benzylic secondary carbocation is going to be more stable okay so we won't worry about that one or the I mean H but let's look at E going to here and hopefully you recognize this as the Williamson ether synthesis and that product then would be an SN2OCH3 and that would be your product for F all right Okay, so the next problem, the compound shown reacts with, reacts with HBr to give a product with a molecular formula. Um, propose a mechanism for reaction and predict the structure of the product. Okay, so let's look at, you're not going to have any reaction with the aromatic benzene ring, but you do have a conjugated um, alkene here. So when you react this with HBr, you're going to get protonation of the alkene to give you the more stable carbocation. So you're going to get protonation there, and you're going to get the benzylic carbocation. Carbocation. Now you have bromine, and then bromine can come in and react with that sp3 sp2 empty orbital to give you this compound here and this is c10 h11 br um, that's the mechanism resonance stabilization for the intermediate um, so if you were to do that you would draw such structures as this because they're all sp2 so what do these look like just redraw them and now you have carbocation there and then this is going to go here so you're going to redraw another one um, We'll draw another one. So those would be your 
resonance structure to stabilize that um, benzylic carbocation, and that is why that happens. Okay, and then the question B, when this reaction takes place in the presence of free radical initiator, the product is different. Isomer, propose a structure for the second one. All right, well, when you look at the second one, you're going to get the allylic bromination. So you got bromine and it's going to an H nu. So you're going to generate the bromine radical. And it's going to abstract the hydrogen here to give you the most stable radical there. And then this would react with bromine to give you um, this compound here. Could you also get it there? Quite possibly. You could possibly get it there as well. And this isomer um, gives you the molecular formula of C10H11Br. Should be different. Mm. Okay. Okay, this reaction is about the Birch reduction. Now, this is called the Birch reduction when it's applied to aromatic rings, but these reagents you've seen before and the mechanism is very similar to what you have seen with the reduction of an alkyne to the trans alkene. So sodium and liquid ammonia generates um, a free electron. And this electron will add to the system. So when the electron adds, and it will add more to the electron withdrawing groups. And then this will go, those two electrons will go there. And these two electrons will go with this carbon here. So what happens is the system undergoes this resonance delocalization to account for this added electron. And, and this goes here. We'll take these right here. We'll put them right here on this carbon. Now, you have also ethanol in solution. So if you have ethanol in solution, it will give up that proton. So those electrons will go and take that proton and it protonates the system. This is a reduction. So we still have this electron here, and these here, and now these electrons are making this hydrogen bond here. Um, and so then we have this system here, and now what happens is we still have another electron. So we did this several times when we did the reduction to the alkenes. And the electron is still adding to the more electron withdrawing carbon. So now we have the two electrons there. When you get two electrons, you got a negative charge. You have this, and you have your hydrogen added there. And don't forget to add in your ketone. And once again, this will take another hydrogen from the alcohol and make the product. This is a birch reduction, as you can see. It's a partial reduction of the aromatic ring, and it um, adds the hydrogen to the more electro withdrawing carbon. 
Okay, the last problem has to do with electrophilic aromatic substitution, and it tells you it's at the one position in naphthalene. It's also called the alpha position. So basically, you just look at your reagents and you do electrophilic um, aromatic substitution. So this one, you're going to add a nitro group there. B is going to add a bromine group there. Uh, C is going to make the Friedel's craft a psyllium ion. So it will add this acetyl type group, isobutylene, one, two, three, four, and HF makes the carbocation here. And that would add that one, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Tart butyl group. The other one, cyclohexanol and BF3. So this is going to make a complex. Then with the OH and BF3, and that's going to be a great leading group to make your carbocation, secondary carbocation, which then will add to our naphthalene. And I will redraw that because that is just getting a little ugly. And we put our aromatic rings in. And then the last one is fuming sulfuric acid, which by now you know that's SO3H. And that wraps up the uh, aromatic compound reactions for this chapter.